An if statement is a conditional statement that utilizes Boolean expressions to alter the flow of a Java program. The best way to understand an if statement is to look at an example. Here is a simple program that asks a user to enter an integer, then prints out whether the inputted number is odd or even. Let's walk through it. You can see the first statement instantiates a variable of integer type. The variable is named num and it is assigned a value of 0. Next we instantiate another variable, this time of type string. It will be called flag and we will assign it a value of odd. Why we assign odd to it will make sense in a minute. Now we're going to want to accept user input, so we have a scanner object called input. Notice at the top we have imported the scanner class which allows us to create a scanner object here. Next we can go ahead and use a print line statement that prompts the user to enter a number. And to read this number into memory, we will use our scanner object that we named input and store the user inputted value into our num variable. That is all the user input we will need to run the rest of the program so we can close our scanner object. Now here is the if statement. It can be broken down into three sections. First, the reserved word if is used to begin the if statement. Then comes the condition where we will enter the boolean expression or a series of boolean expressions as you see here. And last is the statement that will be executed if and only if the condition evaluates to true. So looking at the condition for this if statement, first the boolean expression num modulus 2 will be evaluated because the modulus operator has precedence over the equal to operator. Meaning we can reverse this expression so that 0 is on the left of the equal to operator and num modulus 2 is on the right of the equal to operator. And the boolean expression num modulus 2 will still be evaluated first. Now that that is out of the way, if you remember, the modulus operator will perform division on two operands and return the remainder. Therefore, if you take any number and divide it by 2, if the remainder is 0, the number is even, as only odd numbers have remainders when divided by 2. So that is what this condition does. It takes the user input, divides it by 2, and checks to see if the remainder is equal to 0. And if it is, the string variable we named flag will be assigned the value of even. And if the remainder is not equal to 0, the boolean expression will evaluate to false, and the statement that follows the condition will be skipped, and our string variable flag will remain odd as we instantiated it to. And you can see the last statement of the program prints out whether the number the user entered is even or odd based on the value of the flag. Notice we do not have to indent the conditional statement here. We could have put it all on the same line, and the code will run exactly the same. However, it is good practice to use indentations as it makes code easier to read for humans. So we will clean this back up. Now we can run the program and see that it does indeed do what it was programmed to do. We can enter any integer value and it will tell us whether the number that was entered is even or odd based on what we enter. In addition to the if statement, there exists the if else statement. We only need to change a couple things in this program here to explain the if else statement, as it is not much different than the if statement. First, let's go up to where the string variable flag is initialized, and instead of initializing it to odd, let's initialize it to an empty string. And back down to our if statement, after the statement following the first condition, we can type else. Now what's going to happen here is the condition num modulus 2 equals to 0 is going to be evaluated, and if it evaluates to true, this statement will run. If not, this statement will be skipped, and the statement following the reserved word else will be executed. Running the program, we can see it still works. When we type in an even number, we are prompted, the number you entered is even. And when we run the program again and enter an odd number, we are prompted, the number you entered is odd. That is all the if else statement does. It says, if this condition is true, do this. Else, do this. One more thing to cover in this video is block statements. Currently, we are executing single statements based on the value of the condition here. Often, it is necessary to execute multiple statements based on the value of the condition. We call these block statements. And in order to execute a block statement, we must enclose the block of statements within braces, like this. Once again, we can change a couple things in the current program to better demonstrate. If the condition evaluates to true, in addition to setting our string variable flag to even, we echo back to the console what the user entered. And if it is odd, we will continue to only execute the single statement that assigns the flag variable a value of odd. Now we could have used a block statement in both cases here. In fact, you can substitute a block statement anywhere a single statement is used in a Java program. In this case, we are going to only use a block statement if the condition evaluates to true. And running the program, we can see if we enter an even number, 
the user input value is echoed back to the console in addition to the prompt, the number you entered is even.